Good evening on this Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. We welcome all visitors to our parish and thank you for coming. This liturgy is celebrated with special remembrance of Sam Melsheimer. Let us rise and welcome one another to this celebration. Just ask that you turn and face the entrance of the church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all the faith and devotion, let us uh, commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in the resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty of a living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow the Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we're blessed our palms. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat, untied and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, 
and we'll send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside the street, and they untied it. Some of the uh, bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus, and they put the cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread, spread their cloaks in the road, and others spread uh, leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as following him kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who accompanied Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Let us pray. <coughs> oh, my dear ever living God who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused their savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, 
that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, 
He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, and those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place two days in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard, she broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you always have with you, and whatever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man uh, will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was the evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your face shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I said to you, This very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. And all the disciples spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little, and fell to the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man 
is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and take him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber? with swords and clubs to seize me. Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. They led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witnesses against him, but their tested but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely Surely you are are one of them, them, for for you you too too are are a Galilean. Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. 
he broke down and wept. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes that is, the whole Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with the reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. When they crucified with him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on the right and one on the left. Those passing by reviled him shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. 
One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he, looked down, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday is the beginning of the Passion events that we've just read. It's a day of really mystery and deep reflection for us as we open with Jesus coming into Jerusalem one final time. He doesn't enter on a Sherman tank, but a young donkey to show that he is coming to do battle, but not with military weapons, great kings and conquerors, who loved and attained great military or political successes, always rode a large horse in their parades of conquest and glory. His conquest is humility. His glory is the humility of love. A few day, and a few days later, his crown of thorns would make him the same paradoxical point that, th that his kingship is not one of power, but of love. Love that endures even suffering, which is the, the severest test of love. The humility, meekness, kindness, and suffering of that love is their conquest too. Do you want to conquer the world, said one? Jesus tells us how. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Believe it, he said it, says this author. He is the only human being who could never, ever lie. The crowd's reactions is one that is not organized but spontaneous, 
as the people wave palms to salute him. Jesus, however, doesn't enter by waving back to the people as the dignitaries would do. I'm reminded of what a sportscaster said when the fans were railing against the coach to make a decision. He said, a coach who listened to the crowd or the fans will soon find himself sitting with them. <laughs> Jesus understood this all too well. He knows that many of the same people will shortly turn on him. It was the same people, at least some of them, who only five days later on Good Friday at Jesus' trial, using the same loud voices to crucify him. He knows what awaits him in Jerusalem, yet he also knows he is doing the Father's will. So with courage and confidence in God the Father, he moves toward Jerusalem. You know, we all have a Jerusalem ahead of us, for us, it's not a city, but it might be an illness, a change of life, a problem, a challenge, or perhaps uncertainty ahead of us. Jesus shows us how to move toward Jerusalem, our own Jerusalem. As with Jesus, many people say they will be with us, probably some will not. Yet we must move forward, facing whatever lies ahead, knowing that Jesus has been there before. That is one message for us on Palm Sunday. We never have to enter our Jerusalem alone. Jesus has been there. As we begin this holy week, that recalls the great events of our redemption, so let us ask the Lord to give us grace, the strength to face whatever is ahead of us. Jesus shows us that the cross Whatever form it takes in our life, and in each life it is slightly different, but it is still the cross, can lead to salvation and new life. The cross of Christ has been a symbol throughout the ages. Its vertical axis, it was said, joins heaven and earth. And the horizontal axis joins all ages and races of humankind. Everything meets in the broken body of Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday and the Passion teach us that whatever lies in our future, Jesus had been there first. He knows and shows the way that will lead to Easter for us. We must always remember that Good Friday is not the final chapter, but with faith, it can become the bridge that will lead to victory of eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the unbegotten Son of God, Born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, but not may, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain, and for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death in his spirit, and gone to him on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Oh, I'll do it after the prayers. Our king has entered his city our palms uh, and cries out in homage.
fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father. Through the Son, he gave up for us with love beyond our comprehension. That the suffering and death of Jesus Christ will strengthen the church in holiness and give her new growth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for justice to be born in us. May love blanket the earth as we cherish our faith in Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we recognize Christ in the face, faces of our sisters and brothers who carry heavy crosses caused by hunger, climate change, and poverty, and that we help to alleviate these burdens, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elect and candidates who will receive the Easter sacraments, that they may be renewed in hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, we remember by name, Patricia Welterlick, Bill Howard, Trudy Riley, Cheryl Sikora, Wayne Lovren, Lois Hauk, Elaine Landry, Laura Cooper. May God touch them with his healing and, and saving hand, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ruth Miller and all who have recently died, may they who have shared sufferings and death of the Lord also share his full glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord and Father, with serene courage, your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us to share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we invite our elect to come forward as they be praying for them as they begin their final week, breaking over further the word of God.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effect of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us, when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins. You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as to recline the supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice and blessed in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with his Son, and in this saving banquet, gracious to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church the sound of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints with their brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue, who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin <clears throat> and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's help each other, sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to shun my room, but in this of the world, so I shall be.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as though, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought to us the hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Announcements? In the Nautix, you can sign up to volunteer with Family Promise, who will be with us March 31st to April the 7th. Please check our newsletter, bulletin, and website for our Holy Week schedule. Copies are available in the Nautix. The Lord be with you. Be May mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace. Thanks be to God.